Apple reported huge gains in both sales and earnings, and investors ran to sell the stock. I'm Jack Otter, editor of Barron's.com. I'm here with Tiernan Ray, who writes the uh, tech blog for us, who writes a tech column for the magazine, and is our know-it-all about tech in general. And I mean know-it-all in the best of ways. Thank you, Jack. Uh, so what happened here? 33% gain in uh, in sales, 38% in earnings. So that mm -hmm. means their their margins expanded, all the while being not a tiny little fast-growing company, but the largest public company in the world. Why don't investors seem pleased with that news? Yeah, it's incredible results uh, simply on the face of it. $49.6 billion in revenue made in three months. They sold 47 and a half million units of the iPhone in that time which would seem to be great. However, there's something called a whisper number. This is what buy-side investors look at. And they were expecting, generally, that Apple would sell between 50 and 51 million units. So Apple fell short of that goal for the iPhone. That was the principal reason for the sell-off. So obviously, the stock had, had gone up in anticipation that they would hit or even beat that number. So the one concern I see here is, 46 million iPhones sold, 47 million iPhones sold, and that was coming off of, what, 70 million the previous quarter. Mm -hmm. At what point does everyone who wants an iPhone have an iPhone? The company is telling uh, investors that there's still a small percentage of the base. If you have 400 million plus people out there with iPhones already, there's sort of double digit percentage, small double digit percentage who have upgraded now. There's also switchers. They claim they're getting a lot of people coming from Android phones, from Microsoft's Windows phone, even from Blackberry still. And so they believe that there's still a lot of room to, to grow. Uh, but of course, they're not going to tell you uh, what that percentage rate will be at any period of time and so yeah people are looking to the December quarter which is the big quarter for micro for Apple and when there will presumably be a 6s iPhone and people are saying wow if it was you know 74 million units in the December quarter last year um, how are they going to beat that this time so when we talk about growth we always look to China now of course they're having stock market troubles over there and their economic growth seems to be slowing but it's still a billion people uh, they like technology so how important is China to the future sale of iPhones yeah they're going to have something like 40 stores in China in mainland China this year and growing they're continuing to expand that they more than doubled sales to 13 billion dollars this past quarter so out of 49.6 billion, it is quite a measurable chunk. The company believes that someday China will be their biggest market. I'm not giving a time frame for that, but obviously they're continuing to pour resources and they're hoping that you know stock market ownership is low enough amongst the sort of general consumer population that uh, this current trouble with equities might be a speed bump. Uh, but Tim Cook, the CEO, said, we think that these concerns about China, as far as Apple, are overrated. It's only about 6% of households in China that actually own stocks. Right. Uh, so there's another thing Apple makes. Uh, personally, I own a Macintosh computer, love it, love mm -hmm. my iPhone, have really no interest in buying an Apple Watch. You've got one of these. Do you like it? How important is this to Apple's future? I love it. It's um, convenient for not having the phone on my purse or not having to take it out of my pocket to see messages that come in. You can reply just by tapping on it and dictating a voice message. It has been uh, clearly perceived now, I think, by many people as a convenience item, which means translates into inessential, which means that for household budgets, there's some people who are not going to spend on this until they, it appears to them to have more utility to what they do. That may happen over time. Uh, the good news for Apple is, um, according to one estimate, Strategy Analytics, which is a research firm, today said that Apple made up 75% of the 5.3 million wearable devices that were sold in the June quarter. That's Fitbit, that's Garmin, fitness trackers, uh, and Apple Watch, and also a lot of devices by Samsung. So not only does Apple have in its first quarter, not even the full three months on sale, 75% of the market, they also have basically created the wearables market because if you back out what they sold, this was a 1.3 million unit per quarter market before the Apple Watch. Nobody cares about a market that sells 1 million units amongst multiple vendors in a quarter. So you could say Apple's uh, delivered commanding share and they've basically validated the wearables market 
in one quarter, in three months. And do you think that over time, I mean, obviously you, you like it, the market in general is not as excited about it. You said right. it's not essential. Will it become essential over time and therefore you know, drive the next big growth surge in Apple stock? Yeah, I do. I think that over time, um, not only are app, third-party applications going to become viable, whereas now they really aren't. I also think that the um, interconnection between the device and things like, you know, unlocking your hotel room door, unlocking as a security badge your office door, um, booking yourself in uh, on a hotel, uh, on an airplane flight, I think these things will become more everyday to people. And I think that the, sort of the, the price barrier for people, 300 to $400, will come to seem as sort of less onerous. Great insights into the future. Thanks, Tiernan. Thank you.